Well, good morning. This is Pastor Bradley, the lead campus pastor of Teen Challenge, and Sean. What's Sean? What's your role here? I am the uh, director of the long-term program, Pastor Bradley. And you're a darn good one. Thank you, sir. You're an excellent pastor here. Thank you, sir. All right. So today we're going to be speaking on boundaries and relationships. Basically, what we're going to do here is talk about healthy relationships and healthy boundaries to our loved ones through their addictions. Yep. So uh, what I want to do is first is, is we're going to go with healthy relationships. We're going to start there. And I just want to, we're going to talk about a couple points that we want you to be aware of, okay? When it comes to building or rebuilding healthy relationships. Yes. yes. Uh, so number one, focus on what is in the best interest of the other person. Good. Very good. I think so. Very good. Okay. Uh, never be... E- uh, exploitive, uh, financially, emotionally, sexually, etc. N- never exploit those, you know, to your advantage. Right. Uh, never be abusive. Correct. Physically, sexually, emotionally. Uh, promote the independence of the other person. Do not isolate them or suggest uh, only that you can help the person if they meet a certain need. Yes, that's important. Right. One right so don't there. don't do it. You know, in a way that, well, what can I get out of this yeah. for me? Okay, Self-gain. Self-gain, right. Yeah. Uh, promote growth and maturity in the person. Yes. Um, be honest and transparent. Uh, relationships that are not started on those things, uh, and ma- they usually become maintained by lies, deception. Unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Cover-ups. Yes. Be honest yes. and transparent with one Amen. another. And uh, be completely dependent on trust and communication, right? Communication key. is really the key. It is. Uh, and we even, even just relationships as coworkers, we yes. understand how important communication is to get just our job done. The whole right? process of communication, right. in, in, especially in the environment that we're in, yeah. you have to have communication yep. and you have to have trust. Yeah. So yeah. healthy relationships are going to be, those are some of the points we want to point out for healthy relationships or yeah. rebuilding healthy relationships. Um, so, yes, love is unconditional. All right. If you love somebody, you know it's unconditional. But love also has rules, or Amen. we'll so call them boundaries, right? They do. All right. They so, do. so what are the some of the things that are important in, with love? With trust. 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 Uh, so many, so many times uh, in my personal life, and probably in yours, mm. uh, our trust with uh, people that care about us gets broken. Right. Right. And uh, I think that we have to understand that um, through the addiction process, your life is one big. Lie. That's correct. And so having a, a, a loving, conditional relationship is automatically interrupted Yeah. due to the fact that we are not honest. Right. And, and I think what the, the, the other partner needs to know is that, yeah, let, you know, for me and my wife, like I had to reestablish that trust because I had broken that trust. Right. I did a very good job of breaking that trust and right. I had to work extra hard to rebuild that trust, yep. um, and it's important. And it takes a while. Yes, it does. Um, um, I know for uh, for me and, and probably for you, um, relationships to this day yeah. are still yeah, mm, hit and course. miss That's because right. of right. what we've created in the, in the That's past. Right. So yeah. for, for me with them, and also for some people with me. Yeah. So on the other hand, of the loved ones that yeah. have had their trust broken, right. understand that it's okay, that it's going to take yeah. time. It's going to be a process That's right. through the whole thing. Amen. So. Amen. Um, what else we got here? Uh, keeping promises. Yep. Um, that's another thing that uh, uh, I lacked personally. And I use myself because I've been through this, as, and I'm sure you, you'll use yourself too. But uh, we were not, no. our yeses were not yes, and our noes were not no. <laughs> were, that's correct. So it, that's it, correct. So the promise keeping in that is, um, and vice versa, my mom would say do things, that, and she would follow through. Right. And then, again, it comes to the trust factor of doing what we say we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think a, a big thing for it is a healthy relationship is, is respecting one another. I think Absolutely. It's, it's important that uh, I respect you and that you respect me. And then we have to realize that we're both in different places. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, like me and my wife, when, when I got out of recovery and I was doing well, she went into recovery. Right. And I had to realize that when she was coming back out of recovery, she was still new to recovery. Mm-hmm. And I was further along to recovery. Right. And I kind of had to, to meet her where she was at. Well, and, and the fact of is, is that we don't even respect ourselves. Yeah. So it's hard to give respect when you don't even have respect for yourself. Yeah, so. yep. I, I agree. Uh, another thing I think is um, being consistent. Uh, one thing that I didn't do well and you didn't do well, I'm sure, uh, is we, did, we weren't consistent in our lives. One right? thing I was consistent is not doing the right thing. That's right. I was very consistent. <laughs> <laughs> I was very consistent in doing the wrong, wrong thing. Things, yes. um, so consistency in a relationship is, is huge, especially when you're rebuilding the relationship. Absolutely. Um, you know, I had to be very consistent and intentional 
yes. with the things that I so did with my wife. Intentional, yeah. right? And, uh, and it's important that that goes both ways. Everybody right. needs to be on the same page with that. Uh, one more. Why don't we give um, one more? Let's just compassion. And compassion. Um, f- the compassion factor for, um, I think, the loved one that's, mm-hmm. that has somebody that's in addiction or has somebody that's struggling with any sin mm. um, is the compassion kind of takes it tapers off right you sooner or later they don't feel sorry for you yeah anymore. yeah that's right. Um, that's right and the compassion level is now collapsed and mm. the relationship is now completely broken right right because the compassion is gone the trust the honesty the loyalty yes. the promise keeping yeah, yeah. has ceased yeah I, I will say with that something like that it's kind of like a, a forgive but don't forget like I understand that you know you, you we need to obviously we need to forgive one another, uh, but we don't need to forget what they've done. But we also mm-hmm. have to give them a chance to kind of build, show some compassion, to be able to build that new through trust. consistency. Con- through consistency, that's correct. Yeah, so. All right, that, that's good stuff. Right? All right, very good. So there are some communication rules that we want to let you know that we think are important, uh, and we have seven of them. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go through them, Pastor Brad. Why don't you start with the first one? Number one, do not. It's not about yourself. That's right. Uh, actually, it says it's not about you, but it's yourself right. is okay. Yeah. What someone else says or does to your to you is never about you. Yeah. Don't take what another person says personally. That's right. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, because a lot of times when when, you, when we're talking and we're discussing things, and let's say someone's going through an issue, uh, it's not really my, it's not me that could sometimes is the issue. Sometimes it's their own issue that they're dealing with, right? right? Yes. You know, and we have to we have to be able to understand and, yes. and show compassion and be patient with that situation. Yeah. Now, easier said than done. Um, you it's know, very difficult. You know, and, and me and my wife, you know, we've had a great marriage for six years now, and uh, we still kind of work through some of those things. Absolutely. Um, I don't think they stop when you're married. No. <laughs> I've been married think, 20. <laughs> well, we've been married uh, 14. Yeah. Uh, six of them have actually been, you know, in sobriety. So My wife has to <laughs> healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries, that's right. <laughs> right. But it, it's not about you. And learn that, you know, and even even if, you, if you're offended or there's a situation, like and me and my wife will do this too, we will kind of... We can offend each other. We can take it personally, but we'll we'll regroup and we'll get we'll we'll co- get back with each other and realize like, hey, listen, I'm sorry. It wasn't yeah. about you. Here's what's going on in my life, and this is probably it's not unhealthy to have arguments. Right. It's unhealthy to have arguments when you throw the other person's shortcomings yeah, in their yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most so definitely. there's a difference between not about you and that. But yeah. the fact of it is, is that when we have those breakdowns in our communication. Um, it's not good to say, well, you've been done this for yeah, 10 yeah, years yeah, away. Yeah, right, How right, do you, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. we know we messed right, up. We got it, so, right? Uh, and yeah, we've, we, we've heard it for about 10, 15 years. We, yeah, we I had zero stars yeah. on my good chart. <laughs> all right, rule number two. This is a big one for me. Yes. All right. Rule number two. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. LTL. LTL. Learn to listen, listen to, to learn. learn. Right. The most important part of communication is listening. Uh, one, and, and I've had to learn this myself because even with my wife, like we want to respond, you know, we hear something and then it triggers something in our mind and boom, right. we want to immediately respond to that while they're still talking. You know, one yeah. thing you taught me? Yes, sir. It's okay not to have a response. That's right. Sometimes you, they just need to talk. That's right. That's right. You know, and, uh, I think sometimes we as uh, staff or pastors or leadership, yeah. You look at them and you have all the answers for them, but yeah, you don't. Yeah. They don't. They can't get anything out because yeah, yeah. we just tell right. them what they're doing wrong. And That's this right. And that. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. You have yeah. to listen. Right. One of the most healing and soothing experiences for somebody else is just for you to listen. Just be the ear. Just be the ear. Okay. Mm-hmm. And even if it has something to do with you, sometimes just listen and hear it out. Yeah, absolutely. Amen? Okay. Yep. All right. Next one. Pastor Number three. Brad. Don't treat an assumption as a fact. Ah. People often have an idea about what they think is going on with mm. or for another person. Don't think for a moment to check their assumptions out. Yeah. Yeah. So we come. We can draw a conclusion real quick. Very quickly. That's right. And uh, sometimes we assume things. Mm-hmm. Um, Nine times out of ten people that assume things for me in my past, mm-hmm. they were pretty right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, their assumption was that you kind of messed yeah. up. Well, I think especially for, for people who have come out of an addictive lifestyle and let's say they have a loved one and they're trying to build a relationship with, certain things we'll bring with us and then we'll discuss it and then they'll assume it's the same yeah. thing from the last time we were there and it's not always that way. Uh, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, you know, so don't don't make an assumption uh, uh, and, and make it factual. Listen, 
understand, you know what I mean? And yeah. take your time to try to, to figure point. out what, what's going on. So many times the, the assumption of me was um, probably 95% right. Yeah. But there was that there was that 5% right. that I was telling some, maybe telling the truth or doing something that I said I was doing. Right. And the assumption was, he's lying. Yeah. <laughs> so then when you, you ruin it. Right, 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 you know, right, so. right, right. Okay. Number four, uh, be clear when you ask for something. Communicate your needs specifically. Mm. The other person is not a mind reader, and that is very prevalent. And let's just say in marriages, we'll say in anything, you know, right? Like, and, and 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 you know, my wife, she'll probably would vouch for this, uh, uh, for this. But sometimes she'll she'll know something in her head, and she'll have this grand old picture of how it should be, and what you know, I yeah. should know exactly what she's saying, and what she's trying to explain, and I'm like, I don't, what. Women think different than men. That's and right. Men think different than women. That's right. And 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 she'll get frustrated with me. And then uh, you know eventually I'll say, babe, I, I'm sorry. I just I don't understand. You know what I mean? I don't I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. You 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 know what you want to tell me, but I'm not getting it. So what do you mean me. you don't understand? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. pretty much. But it's good. Be so clear, yeah. But so just be clear. You know what I mean? Be clear of what you're trying to speak because the other person might not know what you're trying to say, and that can cause. Friction. That can cause, you know what I mean? yeah, it does. Uh, it cuts people. It just that's right. separates the communication exactly. factor as a whole. Exactly. Okay. Next Number one. Five. Focus on what you want. Be mindful of how you express your wishes and request. Do not express your wishes in negative forms and the expect the other person to know what you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... I think that's really good. Mindful um, how to express your wishes. Yeah, don't express your wishes in a negative form. Like, you know, you always do this, and I wish you would just stop doing that all the time because, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like negative expression. Instead of saying, hey, listen, you know, right. I love you. And, and it's easy to do that. Yeah. Um, now, we're talking about healthy relationships, and we're using the fact of family versus love when it's yeah. an addiction. Right, right. You know, and um, uh, expressing what you want and focusing right. on what you want right is um, the parents get frustrated yeah, or the yeah. husband or wife gets frustrated yeah, yeah, yeah. because they, they know what they want, but you are yeah, not yeah. or have not been able to meet that right. need. So I'll, I'll use the 80-20 rule, and I use this a lot with, with uh, especially family members, okay? There's counselors and then there's mentors or people who empower, right? So right. a counselor, for 80% of the time, they're going to talk about their issues, talk about their problems, right. and then 20% they're going to give them a solution where... People like me who mentor you as a pastor or a family member, 80% of the time, we can 20% of the time listen to their problems and discuss them, but 80% of the time we should empower them to mm -hmm. try to accomplish the things they want to do and help you help them accomplish the things that you want them to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what I want to see for you? I want to see you, you know, get your life together and get your kids back and, and mm -hmm. I want I want you to go to college and I know you can do it. You know what I mean? And and let's just figure out a way of how we can start doing that. Instead of saying you blew your chance at college, you lost your kids yeah. to the state, you know. Empower them. Right? Yeah, yeah, that. And yeah, that's very good. Okay, absolutely. All right. So rule number six: make I statements. Okay. Well, that's a difficult. For more intimate and for more intimate, both you and the person you communicate with be more connected to what you choose and share. So make you know when when we're discussing, say, yeah. listen, you know. This is the way I'm feeling right now, okay? Which you know, we never do. Never, ever do. You are driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you. Right, right, right. You know? Never I. Yeah, right, exactly. So keep it to yourself, you know what I mean? When you're explaining and conversating, you know, hey, this is the way it's yes. making me feel, you know? And sometimes I, I'll even try to say, look, this is what I, I don't, I'm not... I don't want to feel like this, but mm -hmm. this is the way it's making me feel. So how can we work through this together? And it breaks that... When I when I use it when I'm talking to the guys, I used to do it this way. It, yeah. It's not forcing right, right. it upon exactly. them. It's this is what right. helped me. Right, right. This is what I've learned through right, this, and right. that tends to go further than uh, telling them what you think that they they've been told what to do all their life. Yes, yes. And they're not if they haven't done it by age thirty, they're probably not going <laughs> to do it. So you need to say well, for you or for myself yeah. through. Through what I've been through, yeah, right, right, exactly. I now can share what helps me yeah, to yeah, them hey, instead of making right. them feel like right. if you don't listen to this, you're wrong. Yeah, right, right, exactly. So, yeah. Very good. good, very good. All right, Amen. number seven, last and not least, learn about yourself. Tough one to do. Most people don't want to do that. Of course, because it has yeah. to focus yeah. on the eye, right, right, and not the whole picture, right, right. Do not be influenced by our personal experiences. You need to know which of your feelings are. Perceptions belong to that person 
in the there and now, the here not and now. the past. Right. Yeah, not the past. That's right. There, so, now, here, there. Right, you know. Right, 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 right. So don't be influenced by your personal experiences. One, you got to learn about yourself, right? Yes. Like you know, I mean, why am I having these feelings, right? You know, what is going on to, to make me want to have these feelings and and that those feelings belong to me. And right. That my feelings may not be the same as your feelings. And I need to understand it. We communicate because just because I'm feeling one way doesn't mean you're feeling that way. Exactly. Uh, and that goes, I think, both in a negative and positive connotation. Well, here, learn about yourself. So when when I came off of my addiction, mm -hmm. I didn't know the sober Brad. Right. Yeah. I didn't know him. I lost all reality of who I was. Yeah. Now, for my parents and my loved ones, they lost all right. for themselves saying, okay, am I going to be able to tr trust this guy? That's right. it's always, it was always a foggy picture. Yeah. And so for me, learning about myself, it took time yeah. because I didn't know who I was anymore. Yeah. I lost complete identity of who I was. Yeah, yeah. And that can happen to the loved one too. They Most lose definitely. all, you know. Most so definitely. It, that, that happened with me and my wife. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't really know the sober Sean. Yeah. So when I came back, uh, and I mean, she was still battling in her addiction or whatever, uh, and then she came back. We were both the sober people now. Yeah, who and, the heck are you? Who are you? Right. So we had to take, I mean, listen, we, it took the first year of our marriage, sober was difficult. Yeah. Uh, we had to really relearn each other, you know, and it took work, time, effort. Yeah. Going through those struggles, you know, arguments, but getting through the arguments and it's working so through that. It's it not very, easy. It was very difficult. But. I, I, I'll tell you, uh, when I got back together with Rachel after five years of separation, um, we married in our addiction. Mm -hmm. and, and so then when we gave our life to Christ, when we rededicated our vows yeah. together, like I... Didn't know that Rachel. Yeah, because yeah. we started off. Yeah, on yeah. the wrong me foot. Me too. Me and my wife. Exactly, so it was. Exactly. It was very important that before you uh, allow someone to move back in or yeah. allow someone to be that close to you again, yeah. you have to. Uh, they have to understand, and you have to understand that they have completely changed and they know who they are now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Does that make yeah. sense? Yep, very much. But okay. what I liked is you is that we established our life in Christ. We you rooted have to, our life when you did. Me. That's what we did to me and my wife, and that's why we are successful. And Bradley would tell you the same thing. That's why they're successful. It has nothing to do with Bradley, believe me. Okay, all right. All right, we're going to take responsibility for our actions, okay? It's your fault. It's your yeah. fault, Brad. You did it. You caused this. I was the best at making... I was a blame shifter. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's right. what I was. Right. A right. truth deflector and a blame shifter. That's right. right. That's exactly so. what I did. All right, so we're going to go through some steps on these. Ready? So the first step we think is important is realize that you cannot place the blame on others for the choices you make. Okay? Not we. Yeah. You. You made that. You made I, that choice. That's right. I made yes. that choice. Yep. And it's important. Very important. We love to blame. We do. We do. I used to do that to my, I would blame my wife. I'm like, this is your fault. You know, yeah. if you wouldn't have treated me so bad, I wouldn't have went and used. Yeah. Get the heck out of here. You're a <laughs> whack job. <laughs> I would have used regardless of matter how Now you hear this. Me. Now hear this. Families, mm. this may come up again. Yeah, it probably will. And through your healthy relationship and healthy boundaries, you have to know and realize when they're doing yeah. this. Where you'll say, no, mm. it was not our fault. Mm. Yeah. It was your fault. That's right. And you got to understand that it probably will happen again. Maybe not when they're on drugs, but... Maybe just when you won't give them that $20? That's right, yeah. Well, hello, you yeah. stole $5,000. Right, Why am right, I going right, to give you $20? Right. Well, the last time I gave you $20, I didn't see you for a, a month and a half. Yeah. yeah so, I don't you know, know how there's... $20 gets you that far. But... <laughs> All right. Uh, two, understanding that it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. It, it's okay. It is. You're going to make mistakes. I've found, hear me now, Sean. I'm hearing you. That when you admit your fault, Ooh. it tends to go... Really smooth. Yeah. Instead of saying, Yeah. It was not me. Sean yeah. made me do that. Yeah, yeah. Or I was hanging around the wrong people, which right. will get you in bad situations, but you have to own your mistakes. That's right. That's right. In the first part of this teen challenge, we teach them you have to own what you've created. That's right. Doesn't mean that everybody's going to forgive you right away. Mm -hmm. And you have to own that. You right. have to wear that. You have to be okay in that. Yeah. But you have to admit when you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. I if you won't, you will not grow. Yeah, I think it's huge, right? And that was the, the one of the best things that I could have did in my recovery was admit that, you know, I was a poor husband. I was a poor right. father. Um, and it, it was my responsibility to do these things. And I did them wrong. Um, and then it gave me a perspective. And I looked at, okay, what do I got to do right now? I did these things wrong. What are the right ways to do it? And then I started going. And that is a huge process. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a That's long not an overnight thing. That's right. So, so have patience. Have patience. All right. So well, let's tie three and four together. Okay. I think it says seek to improve your self-esteem and then build your self-confidence. And I think they go kind of hand in hand, right? Right. Um, and I just want to preface with self-esteem and self-confidence. The only way you can truly have real self-esteem and real self-confidence is if that confidence is in Christ. Rooted. Rooted. Has, it has to be to rooted be. in Jesus Christ. Because we we don't possess anything right great or eternal right right all we got to do is understand that if we are living for Christ mm -hmm. he builds that right through being disciplined in his right. word right and and i think uh be be humble uh, don't uh, try to be something you're not or pretend, you know, see where you're I'll at. Or go back to losing your identity. Yeah, yeah. See where you're at and then build off of that, yes. right? You know, uh, very be true. humble, realize where you're at. You know, I had to realize, like, look, Sean, you were a bad father. You were a bad husband. You lost your house. You lost your car. You even lost your kids to the state for a while. You have no job, no place to live. I mean, I had to just humble myself and yeah. say, okay, here's where I'm at. But God. But God. And now mm. I can build on that. It's important. Amen. And, uh, and building self-confidence and self-esteem is, is a huge um, momentum gainer. Yeah. You know, you if, That's right. if, if you start to love yourself yeah. again yeah. and you start to know who you are yeah. in Christ, yeah. he will build that, That's I promise right. you. That's right. And 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 have uh, steps to get there, you know, little steps. Hey, accountability. Accountability, you know, consistency. Yes. You know, and you start doing those things and you're, it will naturally, especially when yeah. it's rooted in Christ, will start to come. Yeah. Well, I think you told me a long time ago that... Um, when you first started in your recovery, you had a mentor. Yes, yes, sir. And in that comes consistency of doing the things that he said. And what built your self-esteem was probably taking direction yes. from somebody that knew right. where you were and knew uh, where you could be if you and would do these things. Exactly. And then your exactly. confidence started to rise. That's right. Because right. right. you were accountable. Right, right. You know, amen. Amen, that was excellent. So uh, let's go. Number five, giving of yourself and service to others. Very important, I think. I didn't pray to be a pastor. No. But I know what keeps me on the yeah. straight and narrow right. is now that people look to you for guidance and yeah. wisdom right. and stuff. You have to be in service. If you are um, battling an addiction and or any life controlling issues, uh, learning to help others takes you out of that. Yeah, yeah. That spot for yeah, some right. reason. You know, when you're yeah. having a bad day and you go to the mountain and you mm -hmm. see somebody going through something, mm -hmm. you're like, man, how can I help this person? And nine times out of ten. It pulls you out of what you're in. Yeah, yeah. It keeps you off of like, oh, my life's so bad. Or this, I'm going through this. And yeah. you just kind of focus on that person. And and it helps, I think, keep you accountable. Because as you're doing those things now, and now you're the person giving back, you're accountable for those yep. things you're doing. And you're accountable for your lifestyle because now you're involved in a ministry. You're involved in service. You're serving yeah. the Lord. There's a lot of different things. Look at doing. look at Jesus throughout the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. He was always in service to others. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And if we're called to be in his image, then we're called to be in service. To be in service. Right. It says that we need to be the hand and feet of Jesus. Yep. So that's what we need to learn. Okay. Service to others helps in your recovery. Amen. I agree. Six, learn ways to let go of fear. Okay. Fear can really dominate. Being sober. Yeah. Being, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was fearful. Yeah. You know, I had, I had a phone call from one of our graduates last, um, yes, Sunday night. Mm -hmm. He said, Pastor Brad, have you ever been fearful of relapsing? Mm -hmm. He said, absolutely. Yeah. I said, but I know, well, he says, then how'd you get over it? I said, I continually read my word. That's right. And his promises, yeah. he'll always keep his promises. Yeah. So he was fearful. Yeah. He was scared. Yeah. So is the parents you coming back yeah. out of Teen Challenge. Right. Or out of something that you've been bondage with. Everybody is fearful of who's going to make a mistake. Yeah. Am I doing the right thing? Yeah. Learning to let go of that and trusting God right. is huge. Right. You know, love yourself, um, accept who you are, mm -hmm. and then and put your trust in Christ and yeah. then build off that. Yeah. All right. Seven, see things. How to see things objectively. So see things without bias or prejudice. It's funny. I just was on Facebook last night talking to somebody. And they put a video up. And uh, the video was of this person. They were young. And they said, that person must be a Trump voter. And I said, that's that's pretty presumptuous. You know, yeah. you're, you're basing a bias off of something, you know, and you're, yeah. you're being prejudiced towards it. And so you can't do those things. So don't build biases or prejudices, especially off of convictions. Right. You know. Um, because what if that your loved one is changing? Yeah, right. And you said, well, he's never going to change. That's right. That's How many right. times have we heard that? Right. That is. And most of the time they were right. right. Yeah, I get it. Listen, but there was that one it, time in 2009 where they weren't right. <laughs> that's right. Right, right. That one, and then from that on, it, you know, they're, yeah. you know, now they're right about you. But um, well, you know, some things. Yeah, but try to just look at the whole picture. Be objective. What's going on with that person that you love now. in their life, in their situation now, and and be 
objective about the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Don't already start forming biases and prejudices. Listen yeah. uh, and, and, and be objective right. to the whole situation. All right, Here's uh, number one. Uh, number one. They should be number uh, one on the list. And let go of feelings of victimization. Okay. Um, be, it says here, and I think I agree, learn to see yourself as a victor and not a victim. You know, we are victorious in Christ. Um, we're, we're not victims, okay? No. Um, the people that we were associated with that loved us were the victims. Were the victims, right. We victimized them. Yeah. You know what but I mean? But we play that role as right. we're the victim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. vice versa. I, I just did, I did a teaching on this a couple weeks ago, and it was um, how we first, we compromise something, then we rationalize our compromise, mm. and then we wind up victimizing Everybody. Everybody around us, right? Yep. And really ourselves, though, because we do victimize the opportunity that we have, but we're causing this. So we're not the victim. Mm-hmm. I'm not the victim of your action. I'm the victim of my own actions, and I made everybody else a victim around me. When people relapse, they're nine times out of ten, they have um, a reason why yeah. they relapse. And yeah. it was never... Um, <laughs> that it, right. It was never us. Right. I'm was, the victim was, here. Right. I'm the vi- right. Right. No, you're not. Right. Right. They had me working so many hours. Yeah, I just had then, to do this. Right, and then, and then, and then you were just treating me awful. And and stop. No, stop. 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 You're stop. not that. That's right. Good. But learn to see yourself as a victor. Though you can be victorious, and you can be victorious in Christ. Number nine. Number now, nine. if is there any of these that you need to listen and learn, this would be number one. Really, this should, this be, should number be number one. one right here. Yeah. Go ahead. Develop your relationship with God, your spiritual your life. Life. Right. What do I always say? Good association or bad association affects good elevation. That's right. So if you have a good, tight relationship yep. with God, you're ultimately, without a doubt, going to be okay. That's right. That's right. Now, if you compromise it and you only do it when you need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're probably right. going to be in a bad spot. This is where we go to the consistency thing. Be consistent and be intentional in your spiritual life. You have to. Have a relationship with the Lord. Understand who Jesus is and apply those biblical principles to your life. Not just the addict, the, no, yeah. the family too. The family too, that's right. And what does they say? A family that prays together stays, stays together. Stays together. That's right. All right. So very important. Develop your relationship with God, your spiritual life. And ten, always try to be a professional manager of your life. Manage your life correctly. Manage your life professionally. Like look at your life and say, okay, what do I got to do? Number yeah. nine. You got to yeah. do number nine. You got to do number nine, right? Do number nine <laughs> to accomplish number ten. <laughs> Make sure you're managing your life professionally. Yes. Okay. We got to right the wrongs, Pastor Bradley. Yeah. When you're trying to rebuild a healthy relationship uh, or even set some boundaries, you have to right the you're wrongs. Wrong. Okay? Yep. So number one, we got to take ownership, like you said earlier. It was me. Of uh, the wrong that we did. Yes, I was wrong. I did it wrong, yes. you know. Uh, two, confess. Don't deny. Don't try to avoid the situation. Yeah. Just confess. Listen, it was me. I did it wrong. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, healing. Give time to to let it heal. And when you do these things, when you right the wrong, healing comes. Um, and two other things, repentance. Don't just say sorry. No, it means victory over. That's right. Right now. Right. But I want to go back to healing. Okay, go ahead. I want to go back to healing it takes time yeah for the healing process to take to take take root yeah, yeah. it takes time yep. confessing and ownership repentance are all a process mm-hmm. right it's all a process right most people are not going to say i'm healed i i have been confessing yeah, everything right. yeah. uh, i take ownership yeah 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 it's a process, it's a process and right. we we read it as if it's that easy right and i don't want to get to people it. to say this is easy this is yeah, if yeah. you're it, that's why we have long term programs right, right. so they can own yeah. what they're doing they can right. confess the things that they've done and then the healing can take a lot of times it takes it takes time for them to even just realize that they were wrong yeah. So in a, in a 12 month program, the, the first quarter of it, the first half of it could just be finally You're still coming to the realization. Your right, could be a realization like, man, I was wrong. Yeah. Holy cow. And you then know, once and then, you know that, yeah. change yeah, happens. Exactly. And then you start confessing it, then it starts bringing healing. Right. Uh, then they start repenting of their sins or repenting of their wrongs, which means they're turning from them. Yes. They're having a new way, a new way of life, a new style of life. And mm-hmm. then that what happens is that brings restoration. You do these four restoration, right. probably. Is going to be ninety um, yeah. percent, yeah. and it's my job to restore my relationship with you because I was the one. I'm writing the wrong, right. so I'm going to make the effort. A lot of times people say, "Well, I'll wait for them to come talk to me." You know, what I mean, right. they didn't talk to me for six years. You know, yeah. so they'll call me eventually. No, you write the wrongs, turn the ship, right? Make <laughs> there you go. make your side of the street clean. Yep. Amen. 
Hey man, I like it. Oh, oh here's a good here's one. A good here's one. a good one. Go ahead. You can do this one. The company we keep. You just said, what did you say? Bad, con- bad, bad association Station. affects good, good elevation. elevation. All right. The purpose of having boundaries to protect and to take care of ourselves. Right. Key. We need to be able to tell other people when they are acting in ways that are not acceptable to, to us. us. A first step in starting to know that we have a right to protect and defend ourselves. There you go. Right there. Yeah. Say uh, my family. Yeah. They had a right to protect that, what they've right. worked hard for. That's right. Because when I went to the house, I never went in with the intentions of having cookies and milk. <laughs> Either right. I was looking for something, right. whether I could get this or get that. My motive was not right. Yeah. So they had a right, That's right. to protect right. themselves mm-hmm. and what they've worked hard to get. Yep. Now, it took a very, very big toll on my family, my mother and father at the time, because my mom wanted to protect me. Right. But my dad wanted to protect the family. The family. That's right. And so we have to understand that it's okay yeah. to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I encourage you to protect yeah. yourself. Yeah, and I think one thing we need to understand is protection works a couple different ways. One, I can love you and I can protect you this way, but I can also set boundaries up for you that in in, in reality are protecting you too. Right. Because you're going to come over to our house, you might, uh, you're going to get involved in this, you're going to steal something, and now you're yeah. influencing the family, you're influencing me, you're influencing yourself. So for you us to help, wedge right so, through it. So for us to protect you too is we have to set this boundary, yeah. right? Okay. What, what, is, what do they say? Boundaries without a, uh, uh, what is it? Grace without boundaries is abuse. Is abuse. That's there right. So they have to have boundaries, and that uh, the only you have the right, but the duty to take responsibility on how we allow others to treat us. It's very important. Yep. Okay. All right. So here's a good one. Okay. And I don't. He'll probably put up on the screen. But no is a complete sentence. It does not require justification or explanation. That that is the, the recovering addict's worst word you could ever tell him. Right. No. 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 But no, you can't use the phone today. Yeah. But no. 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 You, right. What do you not understand? The N or the O? Right. No. Yeah, that's right. No. I hated that word. Yeah, me too. I did not like it either. I still don't I like still it. I still don't like it sometimes. That's right. But it is it is so important uh, to set that boundary and to say, no. And you have to understand. You, you've got to set the boundaries before you even get into this. Yeah. Okay, here's the boundary. And let the person know the boundaries. Yeah. Here's your boundaries. Mm-hmm. I love you. We're going to, and I'm going to empower you. I want to help you. I want to see you succeed. Yep. Here's the boundaries that we're going to use as our guardrails to get you there. No establishes your boundaries. That's right. Amen. That's very good. I like that. All right. What is within our boundaries? Oh, yeah. Okay. So within the boundaries that are set, here's some things that we can, we can have. My feelings. Your feelings. Right. My Maybe. attitude and my belief. That's right. Right. Your right. Be- yep. Your behaviors, uh, your choices, your values. Uh, your limits of what you can and cannot do, your talents, your thoughts, your desire, love, okay? They're within your boundaries, boundaries right? Yes. You, you, th- you're allowed to have all of these things. Right. The problem is we didn't know how to control those things, so something had to be put in place to keep us yeah. from getting those out of control, right? Yep. And, those, and so this goes vice versa on, yep. on the, the family's part yeah. Yeah. or the wife's part right. or whoever's been wronged or, you right. know, these, these are essential. You need these. Right. Because you have a right to have feelings about the way that, like my mother, the way I was acting. Mm-hmm. You're, you're entitled to have that feeling about right. me. Right. You're entitled to have the attitude and the beliefs yeah. that I've. That's right. You know, so yeah. it, it goes both ways. And yeah. if you don't know what, what's in your boundaries mm-hmm. or what is allowed in your boundaries, yeah. you're, you're going to fail. Yeah. And I think it's important to know what the boundaries are, but then relationally, how yes. to communicate in between that. I can have those feelings about you and they can frustrate me, but I can't, mm. I can't, like, we'll say vomit them on you. I can't allow we, my feelings to, to influence yeah, that's right. your feelings. That's right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Here are some common myths about boundaries. Yes. Common myths about Almost boundaries. Almost done. Almost done here. All right. Number one. If I set boundaries, I am being selfish. <clears throat> Burn. Depends on who, who the victim is. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, boundaries are not being selfish um, if they're done correctly. Mm. Uh, they boundaries should be set with the intention of uh, the person you're setting the boundaries for. Yep. Right. Yep. How are these boundaries going to help you get where you got to? Or get? protect or me. Or protect me. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. So there's selfishness, and then there's like stewardship. Right. So good boundaries promote good stewardship. Yeah. Okay. It establishes the no. No. That's right. <laughs> boundaries are a sign of disobedience. 
Wrong. Okay. Our lips say yes, but our hearts say no. A lack of boundaries and ability to say no is often driven by fear. Mm. Okay. So boundaries are not a sign of, of disobedience. Right. Okay. Uh, they are the key, I think, to establishing yeah. good obedience. Yes. Right. You yeah. know. So we establish these boundaries, and we want to know what they're for, where they're going, mm-hmm. because we're trying to develop something in yeah. you. My mentor did it with yeah, me. Yeah. So do he said, he, he, my wife still he, does he, it yeah. to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my wife has a few for me as well. Yeah. Uh, but my mentor, he set up boundaries for me. He said, listen, yeah. you know, uh, this is where yep. we want to keep you. I want to keep you inside these boundaries. So they're not a sign of disobedience. They're a sign of basically saying, because a lot of times when we come home from our recovery, and this is where I think this really plays in, is p- people, they set boundaries up for us. You're like, I didn't even do anything wrong yet. What, 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 I mean, mm-hmm. they're already telling me I'm wrong. Just do it and you'll be obedient. Yeah, right, yeah. They're, they're not there to tell you, 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 you what they are is for you were disobedient. They're protecting you're not themselves. Being disobedient obedient now we want to keep you in this area why we protect yeah, ourselves why we protect us, right if i set boundaries i will be hurt by others we do not have the power to control how others will respond to our no okay there it is um and i hear that a lot with families when i work with families um um uh, I, I don't want uh, I don't want to argue with them or, or uh, uh, I could say no but then they um, might go out they're and gonna set them off they, yeah they're gonna set them off right right and, yeah. and and that could set them off right and you know what that's okay if you set boundaries within your environment that you have created for you and your family's yeah, yeah. life right you should right set boundaries which probably will hurt their feelings that's right it can, it, it, there's gonna be times where it's gonna hurt their feelings and that's right? okay that's okay. Because they're learning, and this is where the relational part comes in. They're learning to deal with your feelings. You're learning how to communicate them about their feelings. Right? You're learning yeah. to trust and gain the respect and love back yeah, for them. That's right. Love's always there, but the love is two different ways. You can love them from a distance, which yeah. you have to when you're in addiction, yeah. or you can love them right. as they change. Exactly. And so you got to build that. Right. And I'll read it. It says, those who cannot love our no and can only love our yes are telling us they cannot respect our boundaries. You don't and, say no more. That's it. Very good. Very nice. Okay. No, we said this. If I set boundaries, I will hurt others. It's okay. Yeah. Boundaries are not an offensive weapon. We are emotional beings. That's right. They're, People put boundaries around my life and all of a sudden you've hurt my feelings. Yeah. Right. Thank God we don't go by feelings. Yeah. No, thank, thank the Lord. By p- principles. I'm a big part of set, bib, set biblical principles and live by them. They'll mm-hmm. never steal you wrong where your emotions will. Yeah. So boundaries are not an offensive weapon to me to attack you and say, hey, you need these because you did this. It's more of defensive. I want to set up right. I want to set up a defensive parameter around you, yeah. or so that you, we can perimeter. We'll call it, what I say perimeter. Perimeter yeah. around you. They use to make a big sure, words. So yeah, that was am, good. A little big, right? That was nice. Uh, to keep you safe, right? right, and to keep us safe because we're trying to move forward in this relationship. Here's All a good. Right. Here's a good. Here's yeah. a good one. Boundaries mean that I am angry. Why are you mad at me? How come I can't come in your house? <laughs> right, right. You mad at me or right. something? No, you yeah. stole uh, everything last yeah, time right. you came in my house. That's right. So we'll talk through the people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will continue to hide my purse for six months yeah. until I can see that, that you're not going to look right. at it. And they did, people did that with me. But I understood yeah. that that's where the boundaries that they set, that I earned the right for them to set those boundaries. You know what the, the greatest thing of this is, though? The whole, and this can happen when you let Christ take over your life, is when you see that person not worry yeah. about the person anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now that you, right. you could come in and sit and, down and yeah. they're not worried about yeah, it yeah. because your actions have lined have up lined with, up. That's with right. you. Know, so Amen. That's good. that's good stuff. All right. Six, when others set boundaries, it injures me. And everything do what mm. you have do have do to them. That's the golden rule. Do unto others, you have do yeah. unto you. So in order to have others respect our boundaries, we must also then respect theirs. Injures me. Yeah. No, that's maybe injures their little feelings inside. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, have to. It's not really injuring you. It's just that I think what it's saying is that, listen, you're the sober one and I'm the one that just got out. You set boundaries for me. Yeah. I also need to understand that, listen, here, here's my boundaries too. You know what I mean? And they have to be, you know, listen, I'm, I'm still dealing with my emotions. I'm trying to figure, mm-hmm. please, can you, you know, work with me? Um, you know, d- d- you don't have to yell at me anymore. You don't have to tell me all the bad mm-hmm. things I did. Uh, but just talk to me, discuss with yeah, me, yeah. love me. You know, so there's some boundaries. They go both ways. They do, right? They do. I but there's a there's a proving, yeah, of 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 that. And I think that's where part, yeah. the, the the relational part, the communication part, comes in place. Like, listen, 
you're going to set your boundaries. I'm going to yeah. explain my boundaries. We're going to come to a common understanding of what these boundaries are. Amen. And then we already know. There's yeah. no like, oh, well, you were, you know, oh, you did that. You, you, you know, that that's, it that's, becomes a, a game right. of now, uh, who did yes. worse. So we know? establish them, we communicate them, and then that right. way we know yep. where everybody's going. So that way you can do unto others as they would have them do unto right. you. Okay, boundaries cause feeling of guilt. I can see how that could happen, yep. um, but it's not guilt because uh, you're trying to. Um, that it's guilt because of the fact that that person finally realizes why you're putting up boundaries. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I'll say this. It says, it's feelings of guilt. And it says, because we have received something from some we tend to believe, we cannot set boundaries with them because we feel we owe them on some level. I'll say this with my son. My oldest son, he was he was uh, Tyler. He's 21 now. I have a great relationship with him, but I didn't, and I was a poor father. So I got him back in my life, and... At first, I didn't have boundaries for him because I felt that I owed him. At, like you know, mm-hmm. I tried to I tried to compensate for my lack of being around. And that's not what they. And that wasn't healthy. And my wife actually had to say, "Listen, ju- I understand you're trying to make up for lost time, but you still have to set boundaries for him. You can't let him do this. You can't let you know establish a relationship yeah. with him, Sean. Yeah. Talk to him, work with him, and that's what I did. And I worked hard. It took years. Yeah, my but, too. You know, he yeah. went from hating me. To, to now we have a best friend, but he respects me as a father, yep. listens to what I have to say to him, actually actually listens and does a lot of it, which uh, is, is, is good. Uh, so that's, Is there a magic pill for that? Or I, if there is, I'll let you know. But my uh, son's the same way. Uh, right. So you can't parent out of guilt or fear. Yeah, right. And it says here, gratitude should not, should be confused, should not be confused with relational responsibility, responsibility right? It's important yeah. for us to build a relationship good. and then set boundaries. Amen. Okay. Number eight. Boundaries are permanent, and I'm afraid of burning my bridges. No, boundaries are not permanent. No. Okay. They open up more as yeah. you become obedient right, right. to what you're doing. Exactly. And then before you know it, you know, yeah. everybody understands who you are and how you live, and, and we're past that. Especially in the beginning, there's a yeah. lot of boundaries in the beginning. Well, right? nine and, times out of ten, the bridges that I crossed, I did burn. Yeah. So I had to start construction. That's right. To build some new ones. Right. And, and yeah. I had to listen to how they wanted me to build that bridge back to them. And those boundaries were you can only bridge... Build that bridge this far. That's right, yeah. Because I don't want it touching Stop. my property right. line right Stop. now. Yeah, that's right. So Stop here. Let's see where we're at. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, man? Yeah. All right, very good. All right. Okay, last but not least, setting some boundaries, okay? Um, your boundaries are your values. Boundaries are yeah. representative of how much or little you respect yourself. If you don't have any yep. boundaries for yourself, what you're telling yourself is that you don't respect yourself, yep. no. right? Decide what your core values are. Yeah, dis- exactly. You know, I did that with my mentor. I went to him and I said, listen, here's some things that I know that I need. Number one, I got to make sure I go to church. As much church as possible, please make sure I get to that. Keep me accountable to that. Hang around good people. Hang around, yep. T- hold my money. Money is a trigger for me. I said, here's the boundary I want. You hold all my money. You give me money when I ask for it, and then I have to tell you exactly what it's for. And if you need a receipt, you ask for that it. That is so key. Yeah. Because we we break, I mean, come on, let's just be real. Number one things most of the time that we that we damage in our relationships with our loved ones is us yeah. borrowing money or yeah. us stealing money or doing setting that and making yourself accountable. Yes, right. It was so huge. Key. Yeah, that was a boundary I had to set right away. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. You know, I'm a 36 year old man. No, that's you know, pride. But it was pride. So yeah. I said, Sean, stop. You, if you want to do this thing right, you've got to set these boundaries. Uh, number three, you can't change others, so change yourself. That's you don't even have to say anything right, about that. Right. And, and what I will tell you is that as if if you really want to change others. Uh, and I'll use, like, let's just say uh, my wife and my kids, you know. Right. Um, when I started changing myself and I started following Christ and digging into the Word and basically said, as for me and my house, we're yes. going to serve the Lord, it wound up rolling changing. over to them and it spiritually started to change them. You know, yeah. if I just came in and started trying to, hey, you got to do this and you need to do this. and you, I just said, you know what, I'm going to change me. Well, biblically speaking, you know, for, for a male. Yeah. Like if there's a high percentage that if I'm doing the right things that that I believe in and what God believes in, yeah, you know, because the the husband should be the head That's of the right. home. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so I'm not saying that the 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 wife or the you know Anything. the women are not they're, significant. They're, they are very equal, much. They're yeah. people in the eyes of Christ. They are. Yeah, they just have different roles. That's all. But as but as a male, um, me changing my life and my wife changing her life. My kids adapted, like yeah, you said, they right. do. It's just it's that yeah. united front that's, that's not right. going to be broken. Yep. So. Amen, amen. Okay, this is the most important one, I think. Right? De- yeah, this is huge. Decide the consequences ahead of time. You come in my house and you steal. You're no longer. That's right. 
That's right. To you be know, here. And, and it's good for us to know, like, listen, if I do this, if I re, if I go use because I'm feeling this emotional, I'm, I'm you emotional. You already know ahead of time what's up. What's going to happen, right? You know, I'm going to start using, I'm going to become addicted again, I'm going to yep. start committing crimes, and I'm going to go back to jail. That is a promise. Yeah, that is a That so will happen. Decide the consequence. And also, for the boundaries as the loved one, if I set this boundary and he gets angry, he may just leave or, or stay away from us for mm -hmm. a while. And you have to be okay with it. You have to know that, okay, th these boundaries are in place and here are some things that could happen. Listen, but these boundaries are the, in the best interest of us. Half, half of the guys that come to Teen Challenge, and we'll talk PATC, yeah. already know what their uh, consequence is if they leave the program. That's right. So they, they already, coming into this, they yeah. already know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so for the other end of the parents, Knowing that if you mess up, you're not coming you're not here. coming home. That's right. That's right. So they kind of know this. So yeah. it's important to understand and decide the consequences ahead of time. Know what they are. Let your behavior, not your words, speak for you. That's it. That's huge. That's um, it. Listen, and, and we, me and you, we have lip game. We had lip game, man. And we, but we didn't back any of that up. No, it wasn't a man. And what I needed to learn is when I was in my recovery, especially building this new life, is yeah. that, you know, just be quiet, Sean. And just show what you're learning, yeah. show what God's teaching you. It's natural you. for us yeah. to want to show people yeah, that yeah. we're doing right, it. Right, and I, Just I, go to work on time for three right. months. That's right. Just pay your bills. Yeah. Just be a good, responsible father. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency yeah. will show. That's right. People don't need to hear the change. They need to see the change. Yep. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Last one, and we're going to close on this. Say what you mean and mean what you say. All right? Say exactly what you mean. Yep. I mean, within respect, let's not get, you know, don't, <laughs> don't, don't get a little, you know, rude yeah. about it, but just say what you mean and then, and then, and then mean what you say, like follow up with your actions. So it's okay to talk. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I want to do. And then follow through with that. I love you unconditionally, but when you do these things, it makes me right. not love you. That's right. Right. Exactly. That exactly. makes sense? Yes. Very much so. Right. I don't love you when you're doing these yeah, things. Yeah. These are things that we, we need to work on. Right. Yeah. But, but it sounds harsh, but yeah. it's true. Say what you mean and mean what you say. And that's it for setting boundaries. And that's Thank it you. for the whole thing, uh, relationship building and boundaries. Thank you so much, Pastor Bradley, lead campus pastor, Pennsylvania Adult Tea Challenge. And I'm Sean Ryan. I'm the director. And thanks for listening. God bless. God bless.